So let's take a look at what's going on inside here. You can see I have several switches. So on the front panel, these switches are aftermarket switches, but they click right into this panel. Pretty awesome. I'm not a big fan of the, the switching action here. It's kind of kludgy. It's not like a regular switch. It's not like all these other switches in here, which are much more satisfying to switch. You can get this nice visceral click. Two switches here. The left guy is controlling the windshield lights. The right side is controlling the bumper, the grill light. You can see I have a relay here. This guy is controlling power from the ignition switch. So when the key, when the key is out of the Jeep, this guy is in the off state. So no matter what you do on either of these switches, they're going to be off. When you put it in an aux mode, these guys can be operated. This way, if you leave one of these switches on, they're not going to drain the battery when the, when the Jeep is off. Otherwise, if you did not have this functionality, you would leave these on. There's a potential that you could leave them overnight and then you'd be an unhappy camper in the morning when you had a dead battery. The most important thing here is the three conductor wire here coming from the engine bay. The green guy here is used for the control signal for the other relays inside the engine bay. The black is denoting ground and the white is actually denoting the fused battery power that is controlling both these, or not controlling, but feeding these switches. Looking from the outside, the wiring comes in from the bottom underneath here and it snakes up along the inside of this plastic piece. And then it jumps up into this area. So when we were looking at the wiring jobs inside there before you could see most of the multi-conductor wires coming in from this side. So see this guy, this guy's coming in from that side along with, I have another one here, this along with this guy. And this guy is actually the connection to the ignition switch. That's the guy that's providing power to that relay to to power all this circuitry up. On the outside here, you can see the wires. It's either moving, coming up to the outside location, the left or right windshield lights, or we had that three conductor wire right here it actually matches very well. You can't even tell that it belongs or doesn't belong. So looking into the fuse box here, you can see that I've placed both of the power connections one is for the power connection that's leading into the cab, and one is the power connection leading out to the, the bar on the bumper here. If I pull this guy out, it's just a female blade grip. Those are the only connections that are inside this box. I've hidden these relays underneath this fuse box here. You can see I've coated the, the openings on the relays with some dielectric grease. That'll help prevent moisture from getting inside. Then I also have the, the fuse that's going to the, the control wire for the high beams, and then also the ground connection. The ground connection is coated in dielectric grease to make sure that this, this is gonna be a good connection for a long time. Now finally, the, the wire comes in down through here, down through the back. You can kind of see it right there underneath here. The connection is made just underneath this panel. I've also put some dielectric grease on that guy as well, just to make sure that connection stays solid. That particular connection is, is gonna be exposed to a lot of moisture, a lot of temperature change, a lot of dust and dirt. So it's important that one stays clean. That's it for this video. It's actually also the end of the series, the whole Jeep Wrangler series. If this is your first time viewing, you can also check out all the other videos down below, I have a link to everything. I wanna thank you again for watching and feel free to hit that, that thumbs up button and also hit the subscribe button because there's plenty of more videos coming very soon. Thanks for watching.